Wet blending is one of the main blending techniques that will help you achieve great results really fast, so you don't have to spend hours on creating smooth transitions. In this video you will learn what is wet blending, how to wet blend on your miniatures, and in which cases should you use wet blending and when should you avoid it. Is it actually better than other blending methods? Let's find out. Also, just before the video begins, I can see that just a fraction of my viewers are subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe, it's free, and you can always change your mind and unsubscribe later if you want. Okay, so what is wet blending? As I have explained in my other video, which is an introduction to basic blending methods, when you are wet blending on your miniature, you are essentially smudging two layers of paints between each other. This is a very similar approach to painting with oil paints, but with acrylics, you have to make sure that you keep it wet. That's what she said! <laughs> anyway, there is gonna be a link to that video so check it out if you want. Just keep in mind for now that acrylics have quite fast drying process which we have to work with. With that being said, let's look at how we can make this work. Before we even pick paints that we are gonna use, note that some paint brands are better than other ones for wet blending. This is mostly due to the fact that some paint brands use different mediums and some use more or less flow improver or some kind of paint retarder that results in different drying times. Now by all means I am not an expert on this topic, but for example Reaper paints use more flow improver which means longer drying time, which is good news if you are wet blending. I have to say that I am not a big fan of adding any mediums or paint retarders, but in this case you can add a little bit if your paint doesn't have it already. But be careful, if you add too much flow improver, it will result in a thick, glossy layer. Before I even start wet blending on a miniature, I feel like it's better to sketch out the area that is gonna be covered. In this case I am painting a subtle reflection on this dark armor. If the wet blended gradient will be a little bit transparent, this way there is gonna be correct color underneath. Once I have decided where all of these reflections are gonna be, I pick each part of the miniature and blend the reflections one at a time. I simply apply both paints one more time right next to each other and start blending them by smudging the layers between each other while they are still wet. If you are quick enough, you don't even have to use any paint retarder or medium. Also clean your brush before applying each of these layers, but if you wanna be faster, you can use two brushes for this. One for the lighter layer and the other one for darker layer and smudging for example. To blend the layers, simply use a zigzag motion or vertical motion along the transition until you feel like it's blended properly. There are two additional things that you have to be aware of when doing this. First is that your paint consistency should be around base coat layer. If the layer is too thin it will be difficult to work with and if it's too thick it will create a mess and also destroy details on the miniature. Even so, if you have any doubts over the consistency, keep it a little bit thicker and spread it on the surface evenly. If you do not stack too many layers on top of each other like this, you should be fine. The second thing is that once you see that the paint is starting to dry and attach to the surface, of the miniature, you are better off letting it fully dry and starting over if you are not satisfied with your blend. Remember that wet blending is not a one-step process, so starting over is definitely something that you will have to do, since you will not always get the result you want on your first try. You can also try to wet blend just the shade color and mid-tone first, and then add highlight color and wet blend it with the mid-tones. Or you can even blend multiple mid-tones, options are truly limitless, but generally speaking you want to wet blend the largest parts first, and then you can add micro wet blends to some specific areas, like these bumps on this fabric, to essentially highlight them. Now I feel like it's a good time to talk about which things are well suited for wet blending and which are not as much. You might certainly try wet blending on all things and surfaces, but it might not get you the result you are looking for. Wet blending will save you a lot of time, but if I had to wet blend a whole tank or some kind of vehicle, it will not get me the precise and consistent texture that huge panels of armor have. So if you can, avoid wet blending on huge chunks of armor and panels where airbrush might do the trick. However, if you do want to do this, because maybe you don't want to bother with an airbrush, it is still better to put down layers that you want to blend next to each other and just blend the small transition between them. I would say that wet blending is much more suited for more natural surfaces like skin tones, flesh, organic matter, fabric and things of that nature. The reason for this is that wet blending will get you nice result very quickly, but it might not be as smooth of a gradient that you would get when layering or glazing. So you can certainly get far with this method, you could also watch me wet blend small reflections on this armor, but if you want to push the smoothness of your gradient further, you will have to go to glazing again. This is especially true for non-metallic metal, since you need a lot of control to paint it, and wet blending, unlike glazing, 
can get out of hand rather quickly. But, you know, this way you can get great foundation for smooth gradients in no time, so you can finish your job with one or two glazes instead of 10 or 15. Wet blending is also, in my opinion, not ideal when you want to blend colors that are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. So if you want seamless transitions between red and blue, you might be better off glazing between these two colors to avoid creating too much of purple, which would be resulting mid-tone. But if you do want that purple there, go for it. And going by that logic, blending between colors on the same side of the color wheel will be much easier for you. In my opinion, the same is true if you choose just to desaturate the color by blending for example black and blue. I know that this technique can be quite difficult to execute at first, but believe me, if you persist and continue trying, it will save you so much time that it is definitely worth it. If you still have any question on your mind or if you cannot wet blend properly, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section and I will get to you. To this day, I'm trying to answer every single comment in the comment section, so definitely do that. Also, if this video helped you in any way and you want to see more, definitely subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you will know when the next video comes. Lastly, if you want to help others get better at painting miniatures, definitely give this video a thumbs up so that way YouTube will know that it should take this video and recommend it to them. And see you in the next one. Bye.